Unintended Consequences, lecture number five. You'll see at the bottom of the screen that you can now go to that YouTube website and find all of these lectures in a proper sequence. I'm going to focus on uh, regulation and both its intended and unintended consequences. And now we all know the, the goal of regulation, or at least as it's stated, in the case of environmental regulation, the intent is to incentivize polluters to change their behavior to reduce their production of pollution. An economist would say that the best way to bring this about is a direct price. Uh, I'll talk in later lectures about pollution permit markets, but it is often the case, especially in the United States, that uh, regulation does not directly listen to the economists. It, it, we don't introduce a direct tax uh, per unit of pollution. If we could introduce such a tax, that would have a direct incentive effect. Instead, consider the case of the Clean Air Act. Clean Air Act deserves a lot of credit for reducing ambient air pollution in many ma American cities started in the early 1970s, and we've had a lot of progress because of the Clean Air Act. But it, it, so it, it has achieved its direct goals. This regulation has focused, for example, on new cars. In the case of new cars, the Clean Air Act requires sharp reductions in the emissions per mile driven for new vehicles. Uh, it, and it has become tighter over time. For example, there was a sharp tightening in the year 1975 so that vehicles built after 1975 were required to have much lower emissions than vehicles built before 1975. This is an example of a, a differential regulation that new capital is more heavily regulated than older capital. A second example of the Clean Air Act is that its spatial intensity varies. Cities which have larger populations than rural areas are much more likely to face extra regulation. Such cities that initially have high pollution levels often are labeled non-attainment areas under the Clean Air Act. And areas like Los Angeles or Chicago or Houston, when assigned to non-attainment for, uh, for the criteria pollutants, such cities face stricter regulation than areas, more rural areas, that are in attainment with the Clean Air Act who face less regulation. So again, the intent of the Clean Air Act is to improve the air, and two major strategies for achieving that are new car regulation and assigning dirty areas to non-attainment status, and thus these areas face stricter regulation. But in both cases, there's unintended consequences. Economists love to talk about the unintended consequences of regulation, and uh, unintended consequences arise when the regulation changes a decision maker's behavior. So consider the example from before. If Los Angeles has strict regulation because its monitoring stations do not meet the Clean Air Act targets, then under the Clean Air Act, Los Angeles will face stricter industrial regulation, and this represents a cost on businesses, and those businesses like oil refineries or other uh, chemical manufacturers may have an incentive to move to domestic pollution havens. Domestic pollution havens are places that are, are areas perhaps in Mississippi or in more rural areas that face that do not face stringent Clean Air Act regulation because their current air pollution levels uh, are below the Clean Air Act standards. And so economists have documented that an unintended consequence of the Clean Air Act is it incentivizes polluters to move to areas away from big cities, which are assigned to non-attainment status, and to move to areas which, have, which are less populated, which are often in attainment with the Clean Air Act. From a social perspective, that may actually be a good thing as you, as you, for the same logic for why we nuclear test in Nevada rather than New York City. When there has to be dirty economic activity, you actually want it to locate in an area where fewer people are exposed. But that was not the direct initial intent of the Clean Air Act. In the case of cars, as I mentioned before, Regulation focuses on new cars, making them cleaner. Same thing with power plants. The regulation often grandfathers existing older capital and focuses on regulating new capital. An unintended consequence of this differential regulation is it actually encourages decision makers, car owners and power plant operators to keep the old capital longer because they effectively face a regulatory tax if they install new capital. And so this leads to what economists call a substitution effect.
The job of an economist here in, the, in anticipating the unintended consequences of regulation is, is to sit down and think through whose behavior is likely to be changed by this well-meaning regulation. It's also our job as empiricists to measure how large these effects are likely to be. And then ideally we should relay this information to policymakers. So if they anticipated these likely behavioral feedback, they might introduce a different policy in the, in, in the first place. Let me end with an example. Professor Sam Peltzman at the University of Chicago wrote a famous paper about mandatory seatbelts and driving. It might seem just obvious that mandatory seatbelts are good public policy. What Peltzman studied in a famous paper from long ago is an unintended consequence of mandatory seatbelts is it lulls drivers into feeling safer. And when drivers feel safer, they drive faster. Uh, and, and so there's this behavioral change brought about by the regulation, and this can have a horrible empirical consequence of more pedestrians being hit by these cars that are now moving at higher speeds because the drivers feel safer behind the wheel. And so I took away that one of the key points of Peltzman's work is if we anticipate that mandatory seatbelts lead more people to speed, then good public policy would be simultaneously mandating seatbelts and having more cops on the road enforcing speed limits. If you have solely mandatory seatbelts without the cops on the road patrolling for speeders, you could end up with this horrible unintended consequence of more pedestrian deaths. And unfortunately, the same thing happened when airbags were mandated. So it's important to listen to the economists and because people do change their behavior as the rules of the game change.